Barbecue Hewitt live inside the Beltway, joined by Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas. Good morning, Senator. Welcome back. Good to have you. Good morning, Hugh. It's good to be back on with you. Now, I'm going to cover the president's press conference, the press itself, the Supreme Court and Congress, and the Chinese. Now, that's an outline of where we're going to go. Do I ever give you questions, Senator Cotton? <laughs> Rarely even give me topics, and sometimes you don't even answer the phone when I call for my interview. <laughs> <laughs> that was last week. Our phone wouldn't roll over. It was very bad. Senator, I, I, did you watch the press conference yesterday? Do you know that he had a cheat sheet with I've, the questions no, on it you, and I, the answers? I, I've, only seen, I've only seen excerpts of the press conference, but I have seen the now notorious cheat sheet he had. Um, I think the Los Angeles Times and the White House both have a lot of explaining to do to provide the president not just with a topic, but with a detailed outline of a question in advance so he can stumble his way through an answer uh, is unethical, uh, and the American people deserve an answer. Well, what has happened to the American press that that is even, cons- you know, I know that maybe the bureau chief told the Times reporter, you've got to get on camera, you never get called on. So maybe the reporter did the deal or the bureau did the deal, but it was a deal. I mean, we all have seen it. There is no doubt that the president got fed a question that he had and read a prepared answer. Absolutely. It's obviously what happened. It's there for the entire world to see. That's why I say the Los Angeles Times and the White House um, have a lot of explaining to do. But this is just one more example of Joe Biden's decline. He, he's not capable of answering questions in public. Frankly, it's dangerous for our country when he does start speaking extemporaneously in public. because He starts doing things like demanding regime change in Russia. Um, but this is why it's it just Joe Biden is too old to be president. He's certainly too old to run for re-election. I, I got to get to the Chinese, but first I want to talk about the court. Uh, We've already blasted the president in the press. The Supreme Court is the subject of a lot of withering criticism. Dick Durbin, your colleague in the Senate, uh, requested the chief justice to show up. The chief justice said, no, not going to do that. I don't know if they teach Article 1, 2, and 3 at Harvard Law, but I teach it every year. And I don't believe anything you pass requiring the Senate to uh, requiring Supreme Court justices to disclose anything is constitutional. What is your position on this? Because they are a separate but equal branch, and they do not dance to the tune that the Senate and the the Congress and the President call? Well, you, I think the Chief was correct under the circumstances to decline the invitation. Um, the, there are some case, cases where it might be appropriate for Supreme Court justices to testify in front of Congress in an air of comity um, and to pursue actual legislative solutions for the federal court system. That's not what this was. This was nothing but Dick Durbin and the Democrats trying to pile on scurrilous press attacks uh, against Clarence Thomas and Harlan Crow, uh, all of which admitted in the fine print in the, you know, the 37th paragraph that Clarence Thomas had violated no law or no rule, and he disclosed everything that the law required him to disclose. Yet it's the left, whether they're in the Senate or whether they're in the media, continued assault on the legitimacy of the Supreme Court solely because they don't like the outcomes of certain Supreme Court decisions. Now, I had this argument with Ruth Marcus, who, like you, is a Harvard Law graduate, last week, and she said, well, they've got to. The the Congress passed a disclosure law. I said, Ruth, if they did, uh, it doesn't bind a justice because you are a separate branch, and the court can choose to agree with your aspirational suggestion, your nudge, your request, but there is no criminal. There is no penalty at all, even if they don't file a thing. Well, and Hugh, I mean, they are, there are uh, canons of conduct uh, and standards that apply to the Supreme Court. To go back to the example of Clarence Thomas and Harlan Crow, uh, there's been no allegation whatsoever that Harlan Crow or his businesses ever had any matters in front of the Supreme Court that would have required Justice Thomas or anyone else to recuse themselves. Or, for instance, the federal courts just. Uh, um, decided to require disclosure of flights on private aircraft. Clarence Thomas, in a statement, said that from this point forward, he will disclose if he flies on private aircraft, as justices have in many cases in the past. But that very change simply highlights the fact that it was not required before now. Yeah, he doesn't have to. My, I don't know if you agree with me on the Constitution. I, don't, I won't press you on it, but I just think it's maybe you don't want to betray your own branch of government by saying, no, we don't have the authority to do anything with the court, but you don't. Let me go to China. President, General Secretary Xi watches what President Biden does. What do you think he walks away thinking after that press conference yesterday? 
um, that Joe Biden is weak, aging, infirm, and doesn't have what it takes to stand up to Xi Jinping if he goes to the jugular in Taiwan or anything short of that in interfering uh, with America's allies or obstructing our interests in the world. That's what Xi Jinping sees of Joe Biden. And that's why it's extremely dangerous if Joe Biden were to be elect- elected to another term in office. Remember, it's a four-year term starting in 2024. That means it goes past 2027, which is the end of Xi Jinping's third five-year term. And with many observers, to include our recent commander in the Pacific, say Xi Jinping is intent on reclaiming or claiming Taiwan for communist China uh, by invasion if necessary. So that's an issue that will come to a head in the next presidential term, and it should therefore be a central issue on the campaign trail. I am so nervous about where we are right now, Senator Cotton. I've been rereading Alone by William Manchester, Volume 2, and his three volumes on Churchill, and it's the era of appeasement, 1932 to 1939. And they really believed it. Neville Chamberlain and the gang, Stanley Baldwin, they really believed it. And I think Secretary Blinken, President Biden, to the extent he knows what's going on, they really believe it as well. But the Chinese have got to be looking at this and saying, this is a very tempting correlation of forces, as the Leninists like to say. Do you see what I see them seeing? Very much so. Churchill warned uh, in his Iron Curtain speech not to give the Russians temptations to a trial of strength. Uh, And that's exactly what Joe Biden and the Democrats are doing with communist China right now, giving them temptations to a trial of strength, that if they want to achieve their longstanding goal of invading and annexing Taiwan to uh, mainland communist China, the very best opportunity they may have is in the coming years or even months. Coming months is what concerns me, especially if there's a transition period. Now, I, I had uh, Chairman Gallagher on this week as, long, as well as Elbridge Colby and John Walters of Hudson. I've heard it all. Can we do both Ukraine and Taiwan? Can we defend both Ukraine and Taiwan from their aggressor, communist nations? Yes, I, I believe we can. And I do believe they are linked. I mean, that's what you hear from almost every person you talk to in Europe, to include Ukraine, and also when you talk to people in the Western Pacific, to include uh, President Tsai Ing-wen in Taiwan, is that uh, although it stretches uh, our munition stockpiles to both aid Ukraine and be able to deter Taiwan, it also would send a terrible message to Xi Jinping if we were to simply walk away from the fight in Ukraine because it's lasted 15 months and we're tired of it. Xi Jinping thinks 15 months is nothing. If that's what it takes for him to uh, claim Taiwan for communist China, it's like the blink of an eye, especially in Chinese historical thinking. So one of the worst things we could do uh, is to walk away from Ukraine because it would send, in terms of what it means for the Western Pacific, because it would send that terrible message to Taiwan. Now, I, I am very concerned about our munition stockpiles in uh, the state of our defense industrial base. And that's why I've worked in, in the Congress last year, working this year, to try to rapidly accelerate in many ways the way we stockpile munitions, the way we build them faster. The Pentagon has taken some steps, but there's still much to be done. We're not talking about aircraft carriers or stealth bombers. We're talking about rockets and shells and missiles that are relatively straightforward to build. There's no reason these things should take years or even many, many months. News items this morning from John Ellis included one about a Louisiana factory that makes black powder, evidently the only factory in America that makes black powder anymore, and it's, it's been out of commission for a year and a half since an explosion. We don't have an industrial base. We have an industrial Potemkin village. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very worse. You know, over the last 30 years, uh, until a few years back, starting in the Trump era, um, you know, we made grievously wrong decisions. So, one, we empowered what was obviously going to be our main chief rival for geopolitical dominance, China, by exporting trillions of dollars worth of jobs and factories to that country and enabling them to build up their military. At the same time, we hollowed out our own industrial base. Um, those two trends combined are now coming home to roost. Uh, and exposing certain risks in the Western Pacific and in the struggle for mastery with China. We need to reverse both rapidly. Let me play for you to close out. Speaker McCarthy, last night, after the debt limit raise bill was passed, he gave a press conference, cut number seven, Jacob, the speaker last night. 
or not. There it is. That's right. And it is Number the largest seven. saving of a bill. You said at the very beginning we had to show you a plan, even though the Democrats have shown no plan. Not only did we show you a plan, we're the only ones to pass a plan. So I think it's up to you now. Whether the economy goes in any trouble, it's you. Because the Republicans raised the debt limit. You have not. Neither has Schumer. Speaker McCarthy got it done, Senator Cotton. Is the ball in Chuck Schumer's court and President Biden's court, in your view? Well, I just couldn't be prouder of Speaker McCarthy and House Republicans for taking leadership on this issue seriously. We should not default on our debt, but we also cannot just continue to spend money without serious reforms. And Speaker McCarthy and House Republicans took the mantle of leadership. I commend them strongly. And the ball is entirely now in Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer's court. Uh, they've been irresponsible about this from the very beginning, refusing to even sit down to negotiate with Speaker McCarthy. But now the House Republicans are the only one who have actually put a plan out and passed a plan. Uh, it's vitally important for our nation that Joe Biden and Speaker McCarthy begin to negotiate. If they do that, I'm confident we can get to a compromise solution that may not please everyone or solve all of our problems but it will raise the debt ceiling and do so with a package of responsible reforms that will begin to get our fiscal house in order. Now, will it spook the markets if we continue to play chicken here? I I don't know that the president wants to meet with the speaker because of that performance yesterday, but it will spook the markets if he doesn't. Well, what will spook the markets is if Joe Biden remains stubborn and intransigent about even meeting with Kevin McCarthy. But, I mean, Hugh, I'll just be frank with you. What I hear is that White House aides are scared of letting Joe Biden meet with Kevin McCarthy because they don't believe he has the ability anymore to sit down and have a one-on-one negotiation without giving away the store or without taking steps that they don't want him to take. And they're trying to stage manage this by keeping Kevin McCarthy away from Joe Biden. It's just another example of why Joe Biden is too old to be president. He's right. You're right, Senator. You're right. And I just hope somebody figure we can't have Woodrow Wilson for five more years. Senator Tom Cotton, good to talk to you again. 